In this tutorial, we'll cover what's new within the Utility and Encroachment Permitting Screens module. We'll provide tips for getting the most out of these enhancements, which primarily affect the workflow process. We will also show off the dramatically improved permit form. Let's get started. Getting to the permit system is the same as in the past. Go to the UDOT website, go to Doing Business, then select the Online Permits from the drop-down menu. Alternatively, users can navigate directly to the online permit system by typing this web link directly into the browser's address bar. You can bookmark this link. Here we are on the home page for the online permit system. As a returning user, this is where you can log in. One change here is that the button for the manhole access permit has been folded into the encroachment application process. It has always been part of the encroachment permit process. If you are applying for a manhole access permit, simply click on the encroachment button. One other critical note, the online permit system is designed to operate most efficiently with Mozilla's Firefox browser. If you do not have Firefox installed, simply click the Firefox hyperlink located here. Other web browsers may not function properly. They can distort the screens and stall the application. If you have any problems completing the application, please ensure you are using the Firefox web browser. Just a reminder about the motor carrier button. We have users that reach this page from an internet search and are seeking a motor carrier permit. Because that is handled by a different UDOT division, this button is really a redirect link to the motor carrier division website. To sign in, enter your username and password in the field and click the login button. This is the Online Permit System homepage. Select the permit application type you are seeking here. You can also select the permit application type on the main homepage first, then you'll be asked to enter your username and password. Either way, you'll end up in the same place. This Start Application page is new. It provides some background regarding why these system enhancements are being brought forward. More importantly, this page displays the Submit Application Workflow. These are the five steps that are required to submit a complete encroachment application. These steps are outlined as follows. Application Responsible Party Identification, Project Description Scheduling and Location Information, High Level Permit Type Identification and Scoping Related Information, Detailed Project Description, and the Required Document Uploading Screen. To start the application, simply click on the Start Application button at the bottom of the screen. This is step one, Responsible Party Identification Information Screen. For detailed step-by-step -step instructions for each field, click on the Help button at the top right corner. This help window provides more information about each box. Again, if you need additional help, there is a link for the list of Region Permit Contacts people. You can keep this window open while you're completing the step one information. If you're the responsible party for this permit, you can simply click on the button at the bottom of the box to auto-populate these fields. This will pull your account information into these fields. If there are no subcontractors, check the box that indicates no subcontractors. Required fields have a red star next to the field. When you have completed all of the required fields, click on the Next button. This is Step 2, the Project Description Scheduling and Location Information page. Complete the required information here. The mile postmarker map is helpful in identifying routes and exact mile markers. When you have entered your information, click on the Save Next button at the bottom of the page. This is step three. This is a checklist. Read the questions and description. If the answer is yes, check the box on the right side. The information helps you to better understand the type of work being done. Remember, the accuracy of disclosure made by the applicant is important. Providing false information or omitting relevant facts on the application may be grounds for application denial or permit revocation. If none of these statements apply to your project, check the last box at the bottom of the list, click the Save and Next button. Step 4. This is the detailed project description page. Check all the boxes that apply. At least one box must be checked in each section here. If none apply, check the other box and enter an explanation in the field. 
When finished, click on the Save Next button. Step 5. This is the last page. On this page, you'll upload required documents for review. In the Document Type field, the drop down menu allows you to select the type of document you are uploading. Enter a description for the document you are uploading. To select your file, click on Choose File. This process works like attaching a file in an email. A window will open, you can browse to locate your file. You can upload common file types such as PDFs, Word documents, and JPEG files. Click on Upload. Once a file has been uploaded, it will appear in the Received Documents list. If you have additional files to upload, you can repeat the process. Identify the type of document, enter a description, and upload the file. You need to provide all required documents for the type of permit you are applying for. For example, for the encroachment permit, you must submit a traffic control plan, a detailed plan of work, proof of liability insurance, and a bond as applicable. The required documents will be marked complete as you upload the required files. When you are finished uploading all the files, make sure you click on the Next button at the bottom of the screen. This is the Submit to UDOT screen. This screen identifies the application ID number. It also identifies the UDOT region where the application is being routed for review. Most importantly, this screen contains the Submit to UDOT button. This button must be clicked in order for UDOT to receive an application review request and notification. Once this button is clicked, the applicant will also receive a similar notification via an automated email. That email will confirm the application is in the project under review status, which means UDOT has received the application review request. Please note, anytime an application is updated by the applicant, including uploading additional required documents or updating the application field information, the applicant must continue onto and arrive at this screen so the Submit to UDOT button can be clicked. This button effectively notifies UDOT that an application has been submitted or updated. If this process is not followed and the Submit to UDOT button is not clicked, UDOT will not be aware that the application has been submitted or updated. Both of those conditions create preventable application review delays, so please remember to always click this button anytime an application is being submitted or updated. These new screen enhancements are not just cosmetic. They will produce significantly more value for UDOT and for each applicant as their warehouse records stored within the system will also be dramatically improved. One example of these improvements is the overhauled permit itself, which has been updated and modernized as well. The old permit has not received an update since at least 2003 when the online permit system was first launched. The permit document template itself dates back to 1997, which means it has not been updated for more than 20 years. As you can see from the before and after visuals, the new permit format has a completely new look and feel. The fields are much better organized and the relevant information is much easier to locate. It provides significantly more value that is not drowned out in a sea of blended together paragraphs. In short, it is crisper, clearer, and cleaner. It reflects dramatic improvement from the past and it incorporates a number of best practices from other well-functioning utility and encroachment permitting programs across the country. After more than a decade of static growth, helping build these critical updates is a long overdue and welcomed change. These modifications will deliver more value to internal and external stakeholders alike. They constitute critical updates to UDOT's evolving business process. They help the department fine-tune its entrusted stewardship role over the state's finite and increasingly crowded resource, the public right-of-way. Thank you for watching this tutorial and for being an active participant in helping UDOT achieve its declared strategic goals.